To create a new auction listing, simply log in using your administrative credentials, your username and password, to the back office area of the website. Uh, once you're in there, you'll see this main admin menu here. It has a plus sign, and that's how you create a new auction. You will notice now that uh, the form fields on the back end are automatically completed with text and different settings selected. Uh, each one, each website has its own unique configuration in that respect, where uh, settings, default language, all of that are uh, unique to each uh, each website. Uh, in this case, we already have a title for the auction event. Uh, if you use internal identification uh, for your auctions, um, other than just the title and the date and that kind of thing, you might do something like this use an internal ID for the event. In most cases, uh, the auction type is a timed online auction. However, um, you might have an announcement type as well, uh, which is uh, just text that displays on the front page, or it's, a, it's information, rather, that gets published to the front page of the website, um, but it does not have anything for sale. Uh, fixed price sales are also known as classified sales. Um, where it's basically a n not an auction, where it's a storefront where uh, users can go in and add items to their shopping cart and, uh, and purchase items out of inventory or make offers on items that you have in inventory. Um, the other sort of dominant type of auction is called a hybrid simulcast auction that allows you to stream audio and video uh, live while conducting an auction in front of a live audience and an online audience at the same time. Uh, you can check in your bidders and uh, clerk the auction and all of that uh, for a live auction event that is happening both online and live at the same time. Uh, typically, most people do not use a hybrid timed auction or the live clerking, uh, so we're going to skip over describing those and go straight to a timed online auction. Um, the announcement text that you see here, uh, you'll notice, uh, first of all, that this is a rich uh, text field, meaning that you can do things like uh, you can highlight text and then make it bold or change colors. You can add hyperlinks or even check the underlying HTML uh, if you want to modify it uh, even further. The title and the announcement text uh, are both included in the uh, website RSS feed uh, and in the uh, site map that gets submitted to the search engines. So uh, this content is going to be syndicated far and wide. You'll want to make sure that the, the title and the announcement have all of the keywords that you want to include for this auction event in order uh, to receive the highest search engine optimization. The optional header text is prominently displayed usually at the top of the page on all of the pages related to the event, meaning if, you're, if a user is looking at an item or browsing the catalog, uh, this header text will be displayed above it all. Uh, it's it's uh, intended audience uh, is people who are actually visiting the website, so it's not going to be syndicated anywhere else. Uh, typically, it's, it's only for consumption uh, by an audience that's visiting this event or participating in this event. The invoice text is optional text that will be printed on the, the invoices for the buyers from this event. The start time and the end time control the bidding period for the event. So um, we can say that this auction is going to start. You can set the time even in the past if you want. We'll set it in the future. And you can select another end time maybe a little bit further in the future. So this auction is only going to be a few hours long. It can be multiple weeks long if you want to. <clears throat> this is the bidding period that has nothing to do with when the auction information gets published. Typically, an auction uh, and all of the information is published well in advance of the actual bidding period. If you're operating in multiple time zones, select the time zone that's applicable. Uh, otherwise, uh, you will be operating in whatever your local time zone is. The next four sections, um, also known as preview info, payment info, removal info, and disclaimers, represents the terms and conditions of this auction event. Every single bidder is going to have to agree to these terms of sale before they're allowed to participate in the event. And they are unique to the auction. 
However, you can see again, default language is included. The data entry method that will be used can be selected here. Uh, if you're using a mobile cataloging application, then no data entry type needs to be selected. Uh, however, if you're uh, doing data entry right through the website where you're uploading the pictures and typing in the information, um, then you would select web-based. If you're uploading a CSV file, like a spreadsheet, uh, with or without uh, the image file names, then you would select one of these two options. If you have any custom fees that apply to this sale, uh, then you would select that here. Custom fees are fees that you create and control. Uh, they're either a flat amount or a percentage-based amount, uh, and they are either charged to buyers or to consigners, depending on your settings. Not everybody uses uh, custom fees, but if, they, if you have them and are, uh, want to apply them to a particular auction, uh, this is how you would do it. Uh, in the event that this auction is on behalf of a single consigner, then you can assign the consigner to the sale here. You do that by pressing this button, and you can either look up an existing consigner in the system by typing in a keyword. There we go. You can either use an existing consigner, or you can press this button here to create a new consigner, a new consigner record uh, that you then assign to this auction. You also do not have to assign a consigner to the auction. If you have a multi-consigner sale, uh, then you will assign the consigner information to the items, not to the auction event. The address information is going to be the default address information for this auction event. However, uh, the software does support multiple locations for single auctions. In that case, you will control the location information at the item level rather than here at the auction level. The close groups and the closing interval have to do with the staggering of the auction. Uh, in this case, the one and the one mean that as, at the end of the auction, one item is going to be closing every minute. Uh, if I wanted to change, I could say I want to close, say, four, four items uh, a minute. Uh, if I type in number four for close groups, uh, if I want to change the interval to you know uh, 30 seconds, I would do something like that, 0.5. Uh, or I can just leave it alone. One minute closing, uh, one item closing every minute. Uh, tax codes uh, you create and assign uh, to different auctions. The tax codes are also you can also control the tax codes uh, at the item level. Uh, if you are charging a buyer's premium, you would specify that rate here. Uh, typically, uh, credit card convenience fees, if there are any, are rolled up into the buyer's premium. Uh, if you are not charging a buyer's premium, but you would like to charge a convenience fee for credit card transactions, then you can select this button here that says convenience fee. The whitelist uh, requirement, uh, if you subject this sale to a whitelist requirement, then uh, you will have to manually approve users uh, to participate in this event. They will not be able to bid until you put them on a whitelist. It's easy to do, but it, and, uh, it allows you to further qualify users uh, beyond your standard measures uh, before they participate in the sale. Pre if you select the preview mode, it allows you to publish the event to the front page and view it as an administrator. You can see what the public would see if you were to publish it. It's not available to the public, though, through the front page. Uh, typically, the, and it also, if you have it in preview mode, it will not create a new sitemap and it will not uh, create new entries in your RSS feed. Uh, typically, however, uh, you don't want to publish or select preview mode. Just leave them both blank uh, until you're all done setting up the auction, creating all the items, and you are happy with the, the information. Uh, there are two ways of determining the minimum bids in this event. You can either assign a flat increment, uh, and a flat increment, what that means is whatever number you put in here, is going to be used to, to determine the minimum bid rather than using an increment scheme. Uh, an increment scheme looks like this, where uh, the minimum bid is determined based upon where uh, the current bid amount is. Uh, you can see here this is the default for this website. Uh, there is a whole 
a method of creating and managing different increment schemes that you can then assign to different auctions. You could do that all on your own. If you assign a starting bid here, then that's going to be the, the starting bid, the default starting bid for all items in the auction that are not assigned another starting bid. Um, so if most of the items are going to start off at $10, then you could do it like that. You can still control it at the item level, of course. Typically, uh, the payment gateway will only be a single gateway, and there won't be a choice. And normally, you wouldn't even see this option. Uh, however, on this website, there is an option to choose between payment gateways that will be used for the event. If you uh, put in any YouTube uh, URLs or YouTube IDs in here, and you can create, you can enter more than one, um, then this is going to create a. Uh, this is going to embed those YouTube videos um, for this auction event. This is not where you would put uh, videos of items. Um, however, this is a good place to put walkthrough videos or marketing uh, materials for the entire auction event. Uh, if you press the button that says save and add items, then that's going to take you straight to the data entry screen. However, I'm going to press the save button because there are a, a handful of fields that are important for you to know about that only become available after you create the auction. I'm going to scroll down now. You'll see there's a new box here that says consigner statement text. Uh, if you put any information in here, uh, the, then um, the consigner statements that get generated after this event will have this message, whatever it is, uh, on there. Also, if you scroll down a little bit further, there's this whole area that says uh, below this is stuff you may not need to use or change. Uh, and typically, these are settings that you just set them and forget about them, and you, and you don't modify them between auctions. Um, but this does show you that it's possible to control these settings at different auction, or based upon the auction itself. Um, if you choose to send a closing alert, then that's going to send a message to users either by email or text message. Uh, depending on your settings, uh, in advance of the auction closing. So I think it's a couple of hours before uh, the event actually, the, the bidding period starts to close. Uh, it's going to send a message out to users who are participating in the event um, or, or following it, telling them that the, the bidding is about to end. The extended bidding period um, is typically deployed uh, for most auction situations. This is also known as uh, sniper protection or soft close. So what happens is uh, if you're using extended bidding, then the, the bidding period, the, the time period, will be extended in response to any bids that come in from the audience. Uh, so uh, in, in this case, uh, the number two is here, meaning that uh, if a bid is received within the last two minutes of the auction, it is going to reset the clock by another two minutes. You can control the threshold time period when this uh, extended bidding is in effect, and you can control the behavior right here. You'll notice there's a negative in front of the two. Um, the negative means that the clock is going to be reset to two minutes left if the extended bidding gets triggered, whereas if you take out the minus sign, uh, that means that the two minutes is going to be added to the clock every time a bid is received within the last two minutes of the sale. Most people have a negative sign in front of that, um, but the choice is yours. The rest of these options uh, allow you to override information uh, that is automatically created for location and date information. If you're using featured images for the sale, uh, then and featured images are not always used for all websites, um, but uh, for websites that allow you to have a featured uh, image or that require a featured image for the front page, uh, you would upload an image here. Uh, let me just grab one with this nice car. So this is going to be the featured image for the entire auction event. If there are documents for the entire auction event, then those can be uploaded here. However, typically documents are uploaded for items, not for, not for auction events. Uh, and that's really all I wanted to show you about uh, creating an auction um, uh, on the auction method platform. There will be other videos. Take a look at the next one.